In Canada, or pretty much anywhere in the world, there are two things that are certain in life: death and taxes. And since we cannot cheat death, what are the plans to lower down your taxes? Two years ago, I made a similar video about tax saving tips in Canada. It was in my early production, so the audio was bad, background music was too distracting, etc., etc. So I wanted to redo this and give you the best experience. Oh, and if this is your first time here, hey, my name is Thomas, and this channel is about how you can save for retirement, reduce taxes, and learning all the financial hacks. So the best way you can support this channel. Is to click the subscribe button down below, or you can click the super thanks button, so I can buy a cup of coffee and produce more videos like this one. And let's get started. First of all, I want to share one of my favorite books in my financial journey. It's called "The 15 Secrets That Taxman Doesn't Want You to Know" by Duane Daku. It focuses on using non-accounting terms to provide you with suggestions on how to reduce the tax efficiently, and is totally legal. The book was first published back in 2008, but lots of ideas and concepts can still apply to today's world. Taxes have been the single biggest expense to Canadians since the 60s, according to Fraser Institute, a Canadian research company based in Vancouver. The average family needs to pay almost $60,000 in taxes in 2022, and that's 45% of the Canadian average household income. And not to mention all the housing, clothing, food costs has increased tremendously. Take gasoline for example, 35% of the cost goes to tax. First, there's the carbon tax, which is a tax on top of the federal tax. Then there's a tax that the province charge, and finally, there's a GST of all the other taxes. So it's like a tax on tax and more tax on taxes. Even with the ever increasing taxes, Canada is still in huge deficit. Let's take an example. If Quebec tax 100% at all income generated in the province, it will take more than three years to pay off all the debts and fund all the obligations they currently have. And although with COVID, the government was printing money nonstop, dumping money into the economy, causing inflation, isn't anything new. And guess who needs to pay the bill at the end? So the author felt the people need tips and direction to reduce their tax obligation effectively. Usually around March or April, many people want to file the tax early because they're expecting a good tax refund and looking forward to spend it. Statistics Canada indicates that CLA issued about 18 billion in tax refunds in 2020. Well, what does that mean? It means they pretty much collect $1,800 per person upfront first. So technically speaking, CLA is borrowing $1,800 interest-free loan from each person. Every year in Canada, let's take a look at what could happen if you simply pay what was due, no more, and had those extra funds to invest each year. What would happen if you invest $1,800 each year in the tax shelter plans for 30 years at a 5% interest rate? Would you believe you would save under $126,000 in your pocket? Keep in mind, this comes for your original $54,000 that you can keep it yourself. So the first tax saving secret is to review the withholding tax in your payroll. If you're working for someone, your employer will usually automatically deduct a portion of your paycheck for taxes. But if you have consistent record of RSP contribution, always getting way more tax refund, you can simply ask your employer to adjust the amount using the form TD1. If there are changes in your life, such as a spouse or number of dependents, credits, tuition, disability, or caregiver amount, These amounts give you the employer a view into how much income tax should be deducted at the source, and your employer can adjust your tax withholding accordingly. So again, if your RSP, medical, or charitable contributions are consistent every single year, you could contact CLA and get a waiver that permits you to reduce your withholding tax. But please keep in mind: do not simply spend all those additional funding. You have managed to get along without that extra cash, so you should be able to maintain the same lifestyle. The purpose is to use that extra money to speed up your savings, and also 
you might still need to pay tax only, even if your employer deducts the correct amount of tax. Reason for this can be other sources of income such as investment or other taxable benefits, so best to talk to an accountant before taking any action. Now, secret number two, turning bad debts into good debts. Dwayne has a unique way of looking at debts. He defined bad debts as when you cannot use the interest charge as a deduction on your tax return. Let's look at an example to see what it means. Say John owns $5,000 on his credit card. The interest on the credit card debt is not tax deductible and it compound interest, so therefore it considered as a bad debt. He also has another $5,000 that he set aside for investment and in collecting interest and dividends. So what he can do, depending on the market performance, he can first cash out the $5,000 investment to pay off the credit card to save that 20% interest charge. And in the meantime, he can borrow from his home line of credit, say $5,000, and to invest back into his original investment. Why? Like I mentioned in my other videos, under line 22100, carrying charge, when you borrow money to invest, as long as the investment is an income producing investment, which means it needs to yield interest or dividends, then the interest that you borrow is tax deductible. But if the earning in the investment can produce capital gain only, then you cannot claim the interest that you pay. This is extremely powerful. If you're making more than $100,000 per year and above, and almost max out your RSP room. Again, I have a whole list of videos that talks about it. Be sure to check it out. Some people further extend this idea to their mortgage payments, turning the mortgage interest payment into a tax deduction payment. When you're paying down your mortgage, the equity in the property increases, and therefore you can borrow more through the home equity line of credit, known as the HELOC then use that money to invest into an income-producing investment which can be tax-deductible. The investment return and the extra tax return is then used to pay down the mortgage again. If the strategy is executed properly, you can then repeat this until the mortgage is paid off. This strategy is called the Smith Maneuver, named after Fraser Smith. But be warned, this strategy is not for everyone and requires a careful juggling act. There are lots of risk factors behind it both in tax and investment liabilities, so please talk to a financial advisor before implementing the strategy. Secret number three, reduce income tax efficiently. Dwayne points out there are lots of ways to reduce income tax. Each of them can only reduce a little, but together they can provide you with a significant impact. So let's name a few. First is to deduct consultation fees. If your tax return is prepared by someone who charges a fee, then the amount can be a tax deduction. Also, any fee paid for the investment or financial advice can be deducted from the income earned. Next is deferred reporting. If you have an investment that matures on a specific day like a term deposit, try to schedule it to mature early in January. That way, you have almost a whole year before having to deal with the tax on the earning. Another way is a charity donation. Canada has a generous tax credit system for donors to charity. For example, Mary in Alberta makes a donation of $700, the federal will give her 15% for the first $200 and 29% over $200. Mary gets $175 in tax credit. Also, the provincial gives 10% on the first $200 and 21% after, so she gets another $125. So therefore, when Mary donates $700 in Alberta, she gets $300 back for her tax credit. The net cost for her is $400. Alright, we are on to secret number 4, Registered Retirement Savings Plan, known as the RSP. I'm sure you heard of it because it is one of the common tools to deduct taxes. An RSP permits you to reduce your tax now and allows the money to compound growth and tax shelter over the years. Let's look at an example again to see how you can leverage it. Tom makes $100,000 per year and say his income tax bracket is at 30%, so he needs to pay $30,000 as income tax per year. If he contributes $10,000 to RSP, then his taxable income drops to $90,000. For simple math purpose, let's keep it at 30%, so the tax he needs to pay is now $27,000. He automatically saves $3,000 in taxes, so technically speaking, the $10,000 he put away really only cost Tom $7,000. If Tom does this for every year and reinvests the tax refund, after 30 years with a 5% growth, Tom will have $900,000 in his RSP account. Indeed, compared to a tax-free saving account, RSP is only a tax deferral plan which you have to tax 100% when you begin to withdraw the money. 
but I think this can be offset with careful planning and other tax saving strategies. Also, the max you can contribute into a tax free saving is still $6,000 per year, where RSP you can put up to 80% of your previous income or roughly around $26,000 per year. Now, there are two things that the offer points out that is to make sure you name your spouse as a beneficiary for your RSP plan, because RSP plan can roll over tax free to your partner should you pass away. If not, the whole amount in the RSP becomes your last year income and easily. 50% of the entire plan goes to your CLA pocket. The other one is to utilize something called the Spousal RSP, which is designed for high income tax bracket families. This is where one person with high income tax bracket contribute to their spouse who has a lower income. The main advantage is at the time that you withdraw, the taxable amounts of each could be considerably lower than if only one person was taking the full amount. This is one of the ways to split income in retirement and save on the amount of taxes that will have to be paid. So yeah, that's some of the secrets that I found it useful, and these are just 4 out of the 15 secrets that offer suggested. Let me know if you find this video useful so I can keep sharing those secrets. And all you need to do is to click the little red button below or hit the super thanks button. Hey, thanks so much for watching. This is Thomas, and I will see you in the next video.